welcome to this quick demonstration of Test Chart Expert. Test Chart Expert contains a huge range of tests and stimuli for visual assessment. And I'm only going to give you a brief overview of what's available within Test Chart Expert within this demonstration. Other demonstrations are available on the website to show you some of the other features. Test Chart Expert will run on virtually any PC running Windows XP or later. And in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to control Test Chart Expert primarily using the mouse and the keyboard. Another demonstration will show you how to use the infrared remote control. When you first go into the program, it will show you a logmar chart as is shown on the screen at the moment. And if you move the mouse cursor uh, across the chart to the top of the screen, it will bring down a little toolbar which will show you the 11 principal modes of Test Chart Expert. So there's Logmar Chart, Salon Chart, Single Letters, Duochrome, Pan and Block, Cross Cell, Fixation Disparity, Fixation Stimuli, Number Plates, the Registration Plates, uh, Fourier Tests, and Contrast Sensitivity. This option here will show a variety of clinical images uh, for explaining things to the patient. So this is called the, the primary toolbar. And if you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, you will get the secondary toolbar. And this will change depending on what mode you're in uh, on the primary toolbar. You'll see that the secondary toolbar differs depending on what mode you're in. If you want to use the keyboard to control the program, then each of these primary modes can be selected using the function keys on the keyboard. So function one will be logmar, function two, snell, and function three, single letters, etc. For the other um, tests, for each test within each mode, then if you look at the, the letter under each of the icons here, so O, R, one, two, three, four, five, etc., that will tell you what buttons on the keyboard will perform each of the functions, and indeed on the infrared remote control. So let's get going. We're currently in logmar mode at the moment, and you'll see that the letter size goes all the way down to logmar minus 0.4. Not many patients will be able to see that, but at least it allows you to measure a threshold, even with your patients with the best visual acuity. You can change the size of the letters by simply using the up down keys, uh, cursor keys on the keyboard, or you can do it using the scroll bar at the bottom of the screen. You can also vary the contrast of the chart by using this uh, scroll bar here, or using page up and page down on the keyboard. And there are approximately 250 uh, different contrast levels. Now you'll notice because I've clicked on the screen, it's actually shown an arrow. If I click on the screen again, that will disappear. And if I click it again, it gives the standard Windows uh, cursor. And if I actually click on any of the rows of letters, it will underline each row. To get rid of that underlining, I just click away from the letters. Now the logbar mode has a, a, a wide range of options. O will set the default letters. So uh, there are two sets of default letters which you can set from the setup. So when you press O on the keyboard or click on that O button, it will give you two default sets of letters and just toggle between them. When you press R on the keyboard, uh, or if you click on the R at the bottom, it will randomize the, uh, the letters. And this gives you a completely new set of letters every time you press the key. Then you've got a whole range of different optotypes here. We'll just quickly run through them. Currently, it's showing the British optotype. Uh, these are lowercase letters. Children often learn their lowercase letters before their uppercase letters. Uh, these are Sloan letters, which are used in the EDRS chart. Slightly different set of letters, slightly different scaling. These are the Sheridan Gardner letters. They're mirror symmetrical. These are Lear numbers for people who don't know their letters. Uh, these are Landolt C's, uh, these are tumbling E's, uh, these are K pictures, these are Lear symbols, and these are Makaton symbols for use with people with profound learning difficulties. And then we're back again to the British letters. So you can select any of one of those optotypes by simply clicking on it 
at the bottom or pressing uh, the corresponding key on the keyboard. Some of the other things that uh, you might be interested in is if you press I on the keyboard or click the button here, it will give you a single column of uh, letters that can be quite useful for patients uh, to isolate their approximate visual acuity without having them read every single letter. And if you press L on the keyboard, firstly it will give you a crowded linear, then it will give you an uncrowded linear, and then two lines, three lines, four lines, and then back to the complete chart. Other options available, well, you can do a geochrome split that takes out the middle letter and puts a geochrome split down the middle, uh, and you can have colored charts as well. So all of that is in a logmar mode, and much of the same applies if you're in Stalin mode. You can see the arrangement of letters is, is different in a Stalin mode, and uh, but the same applies, you can show a variety of different optotypes. You can vary the contrast. Like so you can point at individual rows of letters, and of course you can increase and decrease the sign so, size. So everything that I've shown you for the Logmar chart also applies for the Stalin chart. Single letters, much the same. Uh, a single letter is shown. You can have the, all the different optotypes again. You can turn the crowding bars on and off by clicking on L uh, at the bottom of the screen or pressing L on the keyboard. And all the other options really that I showed you for the logmar chart also apply for the single letter chart. Durochrome for use during refraction. Uh, you can have rings and you can change the size of the duochrome rings using the up down cursors or using the scroll bar. Uh, in the secondary toolbar there. You can also have dots rather than circles. And again, you can change the size of those. Uh, or you can have letters and you can change the size of those. And you can also put up all the different optotypes all against the duochrome backgrounds. Fan and block, again, for use during refraction. Uh, there's the fan and there's the block. Uh, you can actually um, increment the angle in one degree intervals if you use the scroll bar. If you use the uh, keyboard, it will increment it in uh, five degree angles. If you press the up down cursor control key, it will toggle between the fan and block and the blocks. The next mode is cross cells uh, for doing the Jackson cross cell test. Uh, so you can have rings of different sizes or dots. Dots work very well for the cross cell test. Then we go on to the fixation disparity mode. For this, the patient has to wear red, green uh, visors. One eye sees the bar above, the other eye sees the bar below. Uh, the test chart expert also includes a, a number of polarized binocular vision tests as well, using the optional polarized mask or the 3D monitor and demonstrations are available to show how that works. So this is for measuring horizontal fixation disparity, vertical fixation disparity, the worth for dot test, and uh, this is a, a distance random dot stereogram. Uh, so if the patient is wearing the red and green visors, they'll see a shape standing out from the screen. And these are generated dynamically. So by using the up down arrow keys on the keyboard or the scroll bar, in the secondary toolbar, then you can make the, the letters come out from the screen or indeed disappear into the screen. If we now move on to the fixation mode, the fixation targets are arranged into a number of different groups and you can rotate around the images within each group using the up down arrow keys on the keyboard or the image slider here. And there's a, a huge number of images in each group and indeed you can put in your own images or remove any of these images you don't like. So the first group is dots and crosses, uh, targets where you want the patient to fixate at a certain point on the screen, for example, when you're doing a cover test. If we now go into the second mode by uh, pressing the one of the horizontal cursor keys, then we can move to the uh, another mode. And this is the cartoon mode. And this is the clown mode, 
And again, within each mode, you get a different set of images within that theme. There's the cartoon mode. The next mode are landscape images. The next mode are animals. The next mode uh, includes flowers. And the next is uh, various images for helping you explain things to patients. And the final mode is the, uh, the videos. And there's a number of videos included. And again, you can put your own videos uh, within S-Chart. You can embed them by simply dropping them into a directory. And there's information on how to do that in the manual. So there's a huge range of images available for fixation and for generally entertaining the, uh, the patient. Another feature of this that is quite useful is if you press R on the keyboard, or indeed click on R here, then it will automatically rotate round in the form of a slideshow. So this can be very useful. For example, when doing retinoscopy, you simply ask the, the child, tell me when the clown sticks his tongue out, and that's a far better way of keeping their attention on the screen. You've then got the number plate, the registration plate, the statutory test for uh, a vision for driving in the UK. And this is a proper number plate using the correct fonts and the correct spacing. So this is about as close as you can get to the real thing without taking the patient out to the car park. And you can put the number plates on different backgrounds and you can have front and back number plates and you can even look at a number plate on a car, there's a front on the back. So this gives it um, some place validity. So the next group is Fourier tests. This is used for a Maddox rod. So the patient has a Maddox rod in front of one eye with the Maddox rod, uh, the axis of the Maddox rod horizontal. And what they'll see is a stroke, a, a streak next to the, um, the bar on the screen. And then you put up prisms in the normal way so that the, uh, the streak lines up with the bar. So that's for measuring horizontal fourier, that's for measuring vertical fourier, and then we've got an associated fourier test there where the patient wears red and green visors and one eye sees the bar at the top, the other eye sees the bar at the bottom, and they simply line them up and uh, then you can measure the, the fourier, the horizontal fourier in this case, and vertical fourier in this case. Uh, it also includes a, a vernier acuity test. And the final group here is contrast sensitivity. For this test, the patient normally stands at one meter from the chart. So this is the one test where you'll need to move the patient a bit closer. And you'll see all the letters are the same size, um, but they just have decreasing contrast. So you simply decrease the contrast until the patient can no longer see the letters. And that will give you a measurement of contrast sensitivity at a relatively low spatial frequency. So that's a very quick overview of the Test Chart Expert system. There are lots more tests and features hidden away, and there will be other demonstrations available on the website to talk you through some of those additional features. You can display more than one chart simultaneously if you press S on the keyboard or on the remote control, it will split the screen and then you can display different charts uh, above and below uh, the line. And to get rid of the split, you just press S again. So I hope that demonstration has been helpful. Uh, thank you very much for listening.